Hey everybody, it's Martha. Thank you for coming back and joining me. I really appreciate it. I am going to share something new with you today. Um, new for me. Not newly done. Not my idea. Um, I watched a video by Natasha at Treasury Books on YouTube. And she was coming up with this thought process about using book and magazine pages that you wouldn't necessarily know how to use in a journal um, because of the picture itself or because the photograph was too big. Um, however, she did come up with a really good thought about using them in a different way. And um, this was my first one, and this is how it came out. And I'm very, very pleased with it. It is cardstock on the back. This one is sewn, but you do not have to sew it. You can glue everything. And um, I really like the way it came out. I have a little blingy here and a little blingy in the middle of the flower. So this is... Um, Tim Holtz words from his booklets uh, phrases and sayings and words and stuff like that and of course I can't get it back in um, so I will show you some other ones that I came up with and this is cardstock on the back and just a piece of fabric here sticking out I haven't added any words or a stamp to this one yet. I may still do that. Um, the, the nice part about these is you can add to it as you're putting it in your journal, wherever you want. Um, I hope the lighting is okay. I can't really tell by looking at the iPad as I'm recording this because the lighting's kind of um, wonky in here today. It's cloudy. I have my good lights on, but I had to cover them so that the glare wasn't too horrible. Um, this one has muslin underneath. It has lace on this edge. Um, this is fringe from the muslin. It's also sewn. It's got cardstock on the back. So the ones with cardstock on the back would be really good for um, journaling on. Um, this one could go whatever way you want it to. I have stamped butterflies on it with archival ink. Um, this one I messed up. I got so excited that I put the cardstock, I was measuring, I was measuring the fabric to cut or tear, and I put the cardstock under the photograph, tore the muslin, ran over to the sewing machine, um, layered everything and sewed it and sewed the muslin to the to the back instead of sewing the cardstock to the back. So it's really firm. I, I think it's, it could still be used as a pocket. Um, you could put it on a journal this way and have this hanging off the edge of the page and use this as a pocket. So I think it still came out okay. Um... This has muslin behind it, it has the cardstock behind it, some stamping, and some flowers, cloth flowers that came off of a roll. And I just moved everything in my room again, reorganized again, and so I'm going to have to reach over and get those. Um, this is another one, and this one the, I used craft cardstock on the back, craft colored, brown which I don't love, so I figured why not use it for the back of these things. And um, that's a doily, paper doily that I um, inked. So that's behind there. And then I did this one. So they don't have to be big or have a lot of stuff on them. This is just a strip of muslin, and I sewed it. And then I put the glued the word on that. And this one... I, I tried to make it, since it's a window, I tried to make it look like a um, curtain. 
So that's um, cheesecloth behind it. And then I found look on the bright side. So I thought that was kind of humorous. I have kind of a weird sense of humor anyway. Um, this is yarn. It's a mohair yarn with the loops in it. And it's got cheesecloth behind it. And it says out of limitations comes creativity. I love that saying. I also have a Tim Holtz stamp with that saying on it. And then there's this one with just a piece of muslin sticking out the side and a flower. I put three layered flowers on it and I did not sew it. I just glued it. So um, as I said, these could be used for pockets or um, um, journaling cards or, you know, whatever your imagination can come up with. I'll show you what I used some of the first ones that I made, I did something else for the first time. I made a trifold envelope. So I made this envelope. I'm going to put it down here so you can see it a little better so it's not quite so close to the camera. So that's the inside and these are the pockets for the envelope. And this is the outside with three of those cards on there. And the cards are not thick. They don't add a lot of bulk. So um, they came out pretty well. It's not a bulky envelope. Um, and there's still space to put stuff in the pockets of the envelopes. So that was one of the first batch I made. This is just some, this is on muslin, stamped, sewn. And then I put this little lace from a doily on it. So it sort of looks like a window too. And it's got doily behind it. I tore a doily up into pieces and used different pieces in different parts of the um, envelope. And then this one is on the outside. And um, it says from small beginnings come great things. So I have that as a rubber stamp, part of a doily. Again, part of that uh, edging from a, a, a fabric doily I have in some little bling right there. And that's, I did sew that, and then I added this to it with glue. So um, that was my other new thing that I did this week. Uh, this is Sunday. So I did this the last few days, um, and I'm really proud of this. I really like it a lot. So I thought that I would... Um, I may not do the whole process because it's a little bit timely, but I thought I would experiment and show you a little bit of how I do these. And I want to put these over here so I don't lose them. So I have these books that I got for free. I belong to a spinning and weaving guild, and that's not spinning as riding a bike because <laughs> Lord knows I don't do any exercise. So I wanted to show you, these are about fabric and um, fiber, like um, spinning fiber, like wool and cotton and that kind of, and silk. This is all silk right here. It's gorgeous. And um, so when you get sari silk, basically this is what you're getting. You're getting it left over from saris and these, this is fabric for saris. So anyway. Uh, somebody brought these to the spinning guild, and boy, believe me, I snapped these little puppies up as soon as I saw them. So I just want to give you some examples of what um, kind of pages we're talking about. So I would take this and cut it out and then cut this into pieces, like maybe cut it down the, this way in half and cut it this way in half. And so you would then get four cards out of that. Um, and there's this one, which is perfect. I mean, I would probably cut it here and here, and then I would cut it here and here. So you'd have like the window, top of the window in one part. You'd have the chair in the bottom of the window in the other part. I mean, it would really come out really beautiful if you did that. This is just um, cloth and fiber and stuff like that. So that would make a really interesting um, set of pockets or, you know, on an envelope. Same with all of these pages here. Um, there is 
there's a few pages like that, which are, I feel really lucky to have gotten these books. Um, and then these are just so, I mean, amazingly gorgeous, these elephants. I hope you can see with the glare. Um, I think that's better. So there's all these. So you could even cut these up and use them. Um, and I have a couple, I have one in this book. Um, I would, I, I obviously already took off whatever, these were um, like this. They were already sectioned out. So I had cut those off for something else. But you could take this and cut it, you know, here and here and then cut it down the center and it would be interesting. Same with this photo here. Um, that would be pretty interesting. So there's that. And then um, I think there were a couple in this one too. Yeah, um, you could take this chair and cut it up. Like cut this in thirds maybe and cut it down the center. It would just be, it'd be weird and interesting and, um, you know, I mean, this is all um, fiber. I mean, wool. This is um, dyed wool that's going to be put into a, uh, actually, I think it's flax is what it is. I haven't read the articles. <laughs> I need to read the articles because it's very interesting. So you can do that. I also have a... Um, gardening magazine page here so you could take one of these photographs and do the same thing you don't have to use this whole photograph you can use a section of the page and um, do that so I am going to put these aside these are some of the ones that I already cut out from those uh, booklets or magazines this is the page that I made that first one out of and um, these are very textural because they're about fiber anyway, and fiber is a very textural thing. And then these are already, um, cut, I mean, you could cut these into, you know, to size and it'd be perfect too. So I think when I, to make the, uh, use the example, I think we'll start right from this page. And I'm not going to overthink it, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'll try. Um, so I think I will cut this. I kind of like to do things in thirds if I can, or they're about-ish. Um, actually, that blue sky is not going to be really interesting, so I'm gonna that there. I might set that aside. And I might do... That and I'll do that. So this one's going to be real interesting, I think. Um, and some of these are a little dark. After I cut them up, I'm like, oh, they're not as interesting as I thought. And then they're too dark for me. So these are really dark. The only one I really like is that one. Um, so I don't know if I'll use these. So I'll set those aside. And maybe we'll choose another one. I want to see what this one's going to look like. Well, I think that's going to be more interesting. It's still dark. <laughs> but at least it's more interesting, I think. Okay. And then I think... Um, just take this. So I think we'll start with these three, and I might as well leave that up here. Um, I have some cardstock here, but I think I need to measure it out and see if it'll fit behind these. That will, that will, that will. So this one will fit. That's from a, a file folder, so that'll fit fine. Um, this one actually, <laughs> this is all by chance. This one will actually fit there. I'm going to, well, no, I think I'll leave that there. Uh, let's see. 
Actually, that one will mostly fit on that one. So I think I'm going to use those three pieces of cardstock. So I don't have to cut anything for that. And I did not get out a lot of supplies for this. <laughs> Oopsies. So, and I did just rearrange my room, like I said. So I'm going to grab some cheesecloth. I am going to grab the fabric. Oh, that one's the wrong one. Um, those. I'm going to grab it. This is the lace doily, or the fabric doily that I've been cutting the lace off of. So we'll start with that. Alrighty. Let me grab a couple doilies out. Grab some pieces over here. Um, don't know what else I need. All right. So what I'm going to do is decide what I want behind these first. I'll do this large one. Decide if I want it this way. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to put it this way. And whatever I hang off of this, if I do some lace here, I can, I can have that on a page like this. This can be sticking off the page with some lace sticking off of it, and it can be a pocket. So I think we're going to do that. So let me do a quick inking here. And I don't know what I'm going to cover and what I'm not, so I'm going to... Just do the best I can. I always fill in later, or if I cover it up, no big deal. So I think, um, what did I do? Here it is. This is my, this should go over that way. Um, let me see. I have a bunch of strips of muslin here that I can use. I think I'll do that. I'm going to cut this right here. <clears throat> Rip it. Okay. So I am not going to jump up and sew these. This one I will glue, but you're welcome to put it together and sew it. Whatever floats your boat to do it your way. Mm -hmm. I'm ink this. Um, this is just natural colored muslin, so if I want it to look tea dyed, I just take my tea dye ink and I just <laughs> tea dye it. <laughs> the lazy, lazy man's way, or lazy woman's way, or however you want to look at it. Um, so I set that aside. Where'd it go? That's probably going to cause too much glare. So I'm trying to cut down on the glare. I should have opened my window shades and maybe that would have helped. Very cloudy day here. Um, started out sunny, so it was really nice this morning. And... Now it's clouding up, and tonight we're supposed to get some precipitation. So if I do this, I can actually stamp something there. What do I want to stamp there? Um, I don't know. Let's see, I want your stuff off. Okay. I think a little butterfly and I have a little flower. That's not so little. I have a littler flower. Let's see what we can do here. Again, I just just moved everything, so I'm still searching for things. I, this room is in a constant state of rearranging. 
Um, I haven't figured out exactly what works for me yet. So there's that. Um, so if I do that, I think I'm going to do, I'm just using uh, archival ink um, because I like the subtlety of it. And I like to ink on something a little, a little something, something underneath it because it seems to work better for me. Okay, like that flower there. And I'm going to hold it for a few seconds because this is on fabric. Um, I hope I'm not mumbling too much. I reoriented the iPad so that... Um, you're not getting so much of my body because um, on my other videos I've looked and I'm just really discouraged because you can see a lot of my body in it and I don't like that. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody needs to see that. Um, so I could do this in color, but I'm not going to. Um, so, but the microphone's on the other end. So I hope that my voice is picking up okay. I like it. All right. I'm trying to stay organized. Because <laughs> the minute I don't, I am like, where is it? So, cardstock. So I have the cardstock. I have the photograph. I have the butterflies, I have the muslin. Do I want to add something else to that? Hmm. Would something else be too much? I have, what do I have that I can add? <laughs> okay, bear with me a second. I have to dive under my desk and let's see. It's not there. Where did I put it? There it is. Okay. Since this has a tiny bit of blue in it, I am wondering if... Uh, all right, bear with me. I'm hunting. I'm hunting. I'm hunting. <laughs> and I'm still hunting. I had some of this already. That just goes nowhere. I have a bunch of these torn strips of fabric because I also make dream catchers and these are the things that I wrap around the rings to make the dream catchers from. Ah, there it is. I have some of this and I have some of this. That's what I was looking for. These little strips of this fabric. Okay. I hope you didn't see too much of my hand in that. Alrighty. So I don't have to tear any of the big stuff. Um so I don't need that either, I don't think. Okay. So what can we use here? What do you think? I'm gonna put some of this up there. Hmm. I want to put it, it's the same one. Do I want to put some of this up there? Just a little piece. No. Don't love it. Do I want to put, ah, maybe, um, again, looking, 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 because, I rearranged. Oh my goodness gracious. Too many things I know. That's what I was looking for. I'll try that. Alright. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Yes, I know. I'm covering up the butterflies. The butterfly. Hmm. 
No. I think. I don't know. I'm going to leave it the way it is. I can always add something later. So instead of running over to my sewing machine and taking time for that, I am. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm not going to waste this whole piece of muslin. So we're going to do this. I am going to put that there. And I'm going to cut this, take a strip of this, put that on the edge. <laughs> Call me cheap. Cheap, cheap. I'm going to put this here and that there. Yuppers. That is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. So. And I don't want to ruin this piece of cardstock, so that's coming off. My ugly white freezer paper is coming on board. And I hope that's not, like, killing everybody with the glare. All right. Oh, no. I didn't want the whole top off of this thing. What was I thinking? I think my top is really a mess. I think. All right, so um, yeah, I don't know if that works because it looks like oh, <laughs> it looked like there was a whole glob up in the um in the tip, but I was wrong. Look at that. All right, so we're gonna throw some glue on the back of this muslin. And place that down with just the edge hanging over the edge of the card. And then I'm going to put a little bit on the edge of this. A little bit on the edge of my card. And I'm going to hang this over here. Green. I kind of like it that way. And I'm just going to, and if I was going to sew this, I would just glue in the center and sew around the edges. Ah. What do you think? And the little tab is over here. So that can stick out of a page. If I wanted to put a little, um, maybe I'll put a little, let's try it. Because, you know, can't leave well enough alone, right? I think I might stick that there. I know it might not be the best decision, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. So there. Now, if I wanted to, I could put, um, I could put a flower on there. I have some blues, and that would dress it up. And I have some dark ones. Let's see. No, don't like it. Right? Mm. Don't like it. I could put that on there. 
too much? I don't know. I'll leave it. I can always finish it off later with, you know, bling or something else. Um, I could put something along the bottom here. But I'm going to leave it um, because if I'm going to use it as a, a pocket, I might add something when I actually add it to a journal. So then, um, so you make a bunch of these. And then you um, go ahead and <laughs> lose my train of thought. I'm going to get my train back on the track. So you make a bunch of those, however many you want. I got carried away yesterday and made a bunch. And then you can put your envelopes together. So last night I sat in front of TV with my Aileen's Tacky Glue, because I don't really love this for anything else. And I, um, oops, is it better without that? Maybe it's better without that. And I glued the envelopes together. So I took the flap and glued it to the front of the previous envelope. Now I was really careful um, as I did it, like I did this one first, glued that to the, glued the flap to the front of the envelope. And what I did was I had the, you know, had it sticking out and then I put the flap down over it and you do leave just the tiniest bit of space here. And to you do that because when you put things in it and stuff, it's going to fill up. Um, so then you have to decide what to cover this with. I did cover one of the ones I made with a napkin and I want to show you that so that's not part of it <laughs> so I made this and I put this button on it and I used this really bright yarn but I, I I think the yarn adds a little something to it so I'm happy with that and I did the inside by um, using a doily to stencil the inside you could use any stencil you want you can you know any stencil you've got uh, I had the doily on hand and then I used napkin and I originally had laid the napkin oriented it this way and I didn't like it I wanted to do it sideways so um, because I had already glued the napkin on in that direction I covered it up with more napkin which gave it some depth on this part but on this part, you could still see the flower sticking that way. So I put a doily over the top of it, and I may add, um, you can't really see, it's dark. I hope that helps. Um, and, and so I um, I may still put something on the doily here. And yeah, so I'm pretty excited that I really like this. And um, this just wraps around and goes under the button. And there you go. Um, I saw a really interesting video this morning where someone put gussets um, in between the envelopes. There's a space, and it's almost like a book. And when they did that, um, they could actually put signatures inside of it. So guess what's next on my list? Yep, that's going to be next on my list. So all I did was um, I take a doily, which I pulled a couple out here. Okay, so you take a doily and you ink. That's all I do. Take a doily and I ink. So if I want my, you know, design to come over around this way, I just dab. You don't have to go back and forth. Then um, I like it to come off the edge here. So it looks like there's a bit of lace on the edge. And just kind of have fun with it. 
and it doesn't take very long. Um, I don't know if you want to sit and watch me. Go get yourself a drink while I do this. Um, <laughs> or fast forward. If you're on a laptop or something and you know how to fast forward the speed, you could fast forward through this. In fact, if I can figure it out, I'll fast forward the speed for you. I just don't know how to do that when I'm editing. Um, but I'll try and figure it out because I'm sure this is boring. So, and you got to get off the edge a little to get the, the little ruffle there. But once you get used to doing it, you don't rub back and forth. You just pounce up and down, which is why these sponges are really good for this. Because they're very bouncy. And I just think it adds some dimension. And you're getting a um, <laughs> an inked doily out of the pro out of the whole process. So there you go. Uh-oh, that one shifted just a teeny bit. And you can make the doily go in whatever direction you want it. Oops. Oh, Martha. Huh? That'll have to do. You can sort of fade it in and out, um, depending on how much ink you put on it. Oh, that came out pretty. Sometimes I surprise myself. So, that wasn't too bad, right? I still have to do the flaps. The first one I did, I forgot to do anything inside here. Inside here, So, um, yeah, there's that. You have to figure out what's going to show and what's not. And depending on how you cover these, some people... You know, if you're using a napkin, you can use the napkin to um, cover. Oh, look at how well I matched that up, and I didn't even try. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and you could do, I mean, you can even do a double down here if you wanted to show off a little. There. I just think using the doily is so fun and easy and quick, and I will do it on all of them now. So we went and looked at new houses this morning um, in a 55 plus community. Um, I am going to be 63 in May and have never lived in a brand new house. In fact, um, we are, the house we're in now is um, only the third house we've ever lived in. And we've only been here for two and a half years. Um, we... My husband was in the military for 21 years, so uh, we never bought a house, and he was enlisted, and enlisted don't make as much money as officers do, and um, I worked off and on when I could find a job, but I didn't have, like, a career per se, because I never really got to go to college, so... Um, when we settled here in Virginia, up north, um, I did work for the military, um, civ civil service for a while, and um, we bought a townhouse. That was our first house that we ever lived in. Uh, the kids were in high school, and, you know, life was busy, and... Stuff was always going on, and my daughter was dancing, and so we traveled for that a little bit locally, um, like over to Maryland, and stuff like that, so within the state. So, um, we, anyway, we then, when the kids were grown and out of the house, um, we then moved to a farm within the state um, because we had horses. My sister-in-law, it's all her fault. <laughs> um, my husband's sister, she got horses for her daughters. 
and I got a chance to ride, and I had a blast. And so we got a couple of horses. Well, the horses are older. Um, but anyway, I got I got started getting hurt a bunch of times, falling off the horses and stuff. Um, we moved out to the farm. There were no trails to ride on. One of the reasons we moved out there was because we thought there were trails to ride on, but come to find out there weren't. Um, and like I said, I started getting hurt a lot by falling off of the horses, and that was no fun. Being as old as I am, when you hit the ground, uh, it just, you don't bounce back like when you're young. So I decided that um, I wasn't riding anymore, but we still had the horses. And one of our horses is pretty old. Um, she is going to be, if she survives till May, she will be 29 years old this year. She has a mouthful of bad teeth, not bad in that they need to be pulled, but bad in that they're all misshapen and stuff. Um, she has a heart murmur, murmur that most veterinarians, well, all veterinarians, when they hear it, especially for the first time, they want to know how she's still standing, how she's even still alive. Because her heart murmur is so bad, and she has had it so long, <laughs> it's not even realistic how long and how bad this heart murmur is. I mean, it's crazy. So, um, yeah. So we are... Someone else takes care of them. Oh, you know what? I don't have enough of these to... Uh, I don't know if I have enough of these to use. There's that one. Oh, I do. I have these three. I think that'll work. Maybe. Or maybe not, because that's going to be... It's going to be a tight squeeze. So is that one. So I don't know. That one will work. These, if I turned them sideways, would work, but then they'd be off kilter. I could cut that. Cut that one a little shorter. This one's going to be tricky. That's pretty big. <clears throat> so. But I could put it there. I think that's what I'll do. And then... Um, what I did yesterday, or the day before, whenever I did these, I just, I did some cuts. And you can use these around the edges. So, let's see. So anyway, back to the horses. Um, we used to live on a farm. Things got really rough on the farm. So uh, we were there 12 years. We weren't riding the horses. The work was getting to be a lot for my husband. So we moved from the farm to this house that we're in now, which is nearby. Uh, we didn't move that far. And we we brought the horses with us because this community has an equestrian center. But... The equestrian center was not the healthiest place for the horses. So um, we found a better place for the horses to be. It's healthier for them. Oh boy, I timed that wrong. Um, and so we um, moved the horses out there last year, about this time last year. And my husband goes to see them. I go sometimes. But I usually stay here with the dogs because the dogs are a whole nother story. Um, so my husband goes to see them a couple of times a year. I mean, <laughs> more than that, a couple of times a week. And oh my goodness, Martha. All right. 
where the glue dries on the back of this thing, stick it that way. And then, there we go. That works. Um, so, what was I saying? Okay, so he goes to see them a couple of times a week and um, checks on them. He does the hoof care still for them. And he gives them apples and carrots and stuff like that. But poor Bridget. Bridget is getting very, very crotchety. And she's old. And life is tough for her. So, um... Hmm. So, yeah. Um, she... I don't know how much longer poor Bridget's going to be around. But she is stubborn. And she is still hanging on that one. So when he goes out to the horses, I usually do my filming then. But this is Sunday. He's, he's not out there today. He has... Um, said he would stay in the basement until I'm done. I tried to do this video a couple of other times this past week, and it just didn't work out well. Um, I don't like the way it came out. I didn't like uh, the view of the camera. I'm still working on that. Um, and so, yeah, it's I'm a work in progress. I'm a whip. I'm what you call a work in progress. All righty. So, when I get to the last one, I want to remember to do something specific with it. So, I hope this looks alright when it's done. I know this one's a little off because it's not really, it's not that fiber one. I'm wondering if I should put a, oh, Martha, I wonder if I should put this one there. I was going to use that on the edge of the page, wasn't I? <gasps> but, you know what? Nope. Should have been that one. If I had been smart, <laughs> I would have left this open and tucked that envelope in there. Now it's too late. I think. Oh, my goodness. Why don't I think of these ahead of time? I did this last time, too. I was very upset with myself that I didn't think about that. I am going to take a risk. I'm going to lift this up, and I am going to... Um, oh, I know what I want. Again, I just don't know where it is. This is this stuff doesn't tear. I keep forgetting it doesn't tear. Okay, I'm going to try a little trick here. This is um, freezer paper. So, oh my goodness, it just went flying out the, off the table. Almost out the window, if the window had been open. Um, I'm going to leave this open and not glue it because I want my flap to tuck into there. So I think that that's got to fold in, so that's not going to work. And it wouldn't work that way because then the butterflies and yeah. Hmm. Hmm. What am I gonna do, people? Am I going to? I guess this was poor planning, hey? That's too big. Ooh. No, that one won't work either. <laughs> too big. Um. Too big. Uh oh. I just lost my wax paper, too. This is how my crafting goes. I don't know how it goes for you. Wrong way. That one might work. It's kind of plain. Wrong orientation. That one won't work. Well, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> Am I thrilled? Eh. 
so. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, okay, we're going to ink this page a little more because it needs it. It needs a little help. I'll be happy with this when it's done. I know I will. Do you get these little bits that um, come up on the when you ink? I don't know. I don't know if it's the sponge or the ink pad. Can you see those little bits? It's annoying. I don't like getting those. So, all right. I don't know if I can do much with the edge of this because there's no cardstock hanging off of it. You see, it looks like a window. And you could put something up under there if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> Am I a mess today or what? No, oh, wait. I'm a mess every day. All right. So, is that too much? I feel like it needs something. Maybe that. Um, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Hey, you know what? All you can do is try and go, oopsies, go for it. And if you don't like it, that's okay. You can set it to the side and maybe you'll like it later on. You know? Okay. I'm going to hold that there. And I'm going to glue the cardboard. Oh, dear. That is not straight. But that could be because, well, that's all right. Yeah, too late. This glue dries so fast. Holy cow, it dries fast. All right, so I am going to... I'm thinking. Can you tell? I am thinking. Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm going to glue this on three sides for now. And I am... Going to just place it right there. I think I'm gonna put a little, a little dab will do ya. There, eeks. Too, too much of a dab. All right, so I am, I am. Gonna clean up that mess and then I am going to put just a little dab under here not quite sticking like I want it to but I think everything else is sticking the way oops <laughs> including the paper towel all right so what I'm going to do is I am going to re-glue this edge and this edge but we are not going to glue that side edge now what i am going to do put that aside in case i need that again i'm just going to hold this while it while it um, sort of cures but isn't this fun i i feel like this is not hard like this is really easy and you can put whatever you want inside and you can put whatever you want on the outside and you can decorate your little heart's content i'm just gonna ink this just a light ink Could put 
use the doily method on it, but I'm not going to at this point. So you have your, your pockets for your envelope. That one needs a little, that one needs to stick a little better. And the envelopes I used for these, just so you know, I got these in Walmart. They are white invitation envelopes and they are four and three eighths by five and three quarters. So I put four by five on here because I wanted the, that's the size I cut my cards to put inside. But the envelope is four and three eighths by five and three quarters. These are a heavyweight, um, it says heavyweight white wove, <laughs> which doesn't make much sense. But anyway, um, I don't know if you can still get these because when I was making cards, it was probably, uh, gee, maybe um, eight or nine years ago. So can't really tell you if they still make them. I haven't looked for them, but I dug those out of my my office stash. But you, there's lots of room to put nice, fun stuff in there. Um, each one of them, you know, has quite a bit of room. They get tight as you go down. Um, and whatever you put on the front, the heavier the thing on the front, or the stiffer, the tighter the um, pocket is going to be. But that's okay. So now we have this side. And if we fold this around, we can now fold that into that card. It's a little puffy, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, once you put stuff inside, you're going to need that extra space. <laughs> that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. And you can also put a new fold in it. So there. So... That's why I didn't put anything on the flap. Um, you could put something up here. I could decorate it with doily. Um, I could ink it with doily. I could put a, a, you know, a partial doily on there. I could do a lot of things, but I'm not going to do anything with it now. These are for future use, for future journals. So I figure, you know, um, you do the basics now. You can dress it up later on. And um, it's a good way, if you like start going nuts like I did, making these little cards, um, it's a good way to use them. And so this one on the end could be a little secret. Let me find, let me find the box. Um, and let me find a little tiny... Oh, more organization is definitely needed. Oh, look, I found the other bag of cutouts. <laughs> okay, so this one is obviously too long, but this can, if this was cut down, this could be, these go in my, um, my, um, the crinkly bags, you know, those things. Um... There's a name for them. Shout it out. Okay. Uh, these pencils. Here. Why can't I think of the name of that bag? <laughs> because I'm tired. Today was a stressful day. Anyway, I started telling you about the new houses we moved. We went to look at. So when we moved into this house, it was a compromise. There. Now, it can't be that long because this one's going to fold in and it wouldn't fold then. But you put one that just sticks out like that, right? And it's the perfect size and you can do that. And then secretly that tucks into there. So I'm pretty happy with that. It wasn't hard. Sit and make a bunch of these cards. Um, I have found to not be overwhelmed... I know, I jumped subjects again. Please bear with me. Um, I have found that if I take out a minimal amount of things, I have doilies, I have uh, cheesecloth, I have some fabric strips, um, I have the um, um, cardstock, different colors of cardstock. A few rubber stamps, whatever your favorite is for that day. 
your your cutouts. Here's the bag of cutouts I found that I had done. I did a bunch of these last night and um, cut these out of the the book and excuse me and so I'm going to put these on cards and I'm going to do the same thing and I may like some of them and I may not <laughs> oh goodness I have the hiccups I need some water as long as it's not the water I used to dip my glue brush in I tell you, something goes wrong in every one of these videos and I have to redo it. So I am going to close for now since I have the hiccups. But I think you get the idea. So have some fun. Uh, try new things. Thank you for watching. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you feel like it's easy. And um, happy crafting. And have yourself a great day. Please come back and visit me soon. If you like this, please subscribe below if you haven't. I want to say hello and welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate it greatly. Um, and, um, you know, take care. Happy crafting. Come back soon. <laughs>